Lesson 114 is our second lesson on probability, and in this lesson we'll be covering independent events. Now in Lesson 112, we learned about what probability is. Let's just rewrite the formula for probability. So probability is equal to the number of desired outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Now we've talked about a coin, flipping a coin, and we think about a coin that's got two sides. One side is heads, one side is tails. So flipping a coin, the total number of possible outcomes or ways it could land are two. There's two possible outcomes, a heads or a tails. The probability of getting a heads, we could just say P parentheses H. Remember that doesn't mean P times H. We just say that to ourselves, probability of a heads is equal to 1 over 2. Now, the probability of flipping the coin two times in a row and getting heads both times, we multiply the probabilities together. And we would say 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 is equal to 1 over 4. And see, that's a lower probability. It's harder to get heads twice in a row than just to flip it once and get it. So if we flip this coin and it lands, we get a heads. We pick it up, flip it again, same exact method and everything, lands, and we get a heads again. The probability of doing that twice in a row is 1 in 4. We call those events independent events because one was not affected by the other one. Getting heads the first time does not mean that we will get heads the second time. It's not affected by that first flip and we call those independent events. The probability of independent events occurring, we multiply those probabilities together. The probability of getting a heads twice, two times in a row, that's one in four. And so that means if we did four experiments of flipping a coin twice, one of those four times we would probably get heads two times in a row. Probably get it. Doesn't mean that we definitely would. Look at practice problem A. I have that circle there. Let's pretend like that's a number spinner and that little red dial, you can flip that and spin it around and it will stop on a certain number. What's the probability of spinning that number spinner and the first time getting a 1, the second time getting a 2, and the third time getting a 7 in that order, a 1, a 2, then a 7? Well, we would think about independent events and we'd multiply those together. The probability of spinning it and landing on a 1 is one desired outcome over eight possible outcomes. And we multiply that by the probabil probability of landing on a two. That's, again, one desired outcome over eight possible outcomes. And the seven would also be the same way, one desired over eight possible outcomes. And so we're doing one over eight times eight times eight. And that would equal one over 512. pretty small probability. So that means if we did that experiment of spinning it three times, we'd have to do that experiment 512 times and probably one of those times we would get one, two, and seven in that order. We may not though, but probably we would get it at least once. Let's try another one. What is the probability of getting a number greater than four on the first spin and a three on the second spin. So these are independent events. That first event, we want to try to get a number greater than four. So that would be like a five, a six, a seven, or an eight. Four desired outcomes over eight possible multiplied by a three on the second spin. One desired outcome over eight possible. We can reduce four over eight to one over two and we end up with one over sixteen. So if we spun that spinner twice, if we did that experiment of two spins 16 times, then probably one of those 16 times we would get that order, a number greater than four on the first spin and a three on the second spin. 
probably we would get that. We may get five times that that would happen. We may get none. Probability just gives us an idea of how difficult it will be to get that desired result. Okay, well that's all for lesson 114.